I'm going to go over the process of installing Windows Deployment Services, loading the installation media for Windows 10, and deploying Windows 10 over the network. To start, I've uh, created a new server, just give it a name of deployment, and I need to install the Windows Deployment Services feature. So to start, you can go to Manage, Add Roles and Features. Next, Role-based or Feature-based installation. Select the server and press Next. Then right at the bottom, you've got Windows Deployment Services. You can just tick it, make sure the management tools is ticked, and then press Add Features. And then Next, Next, Next. On the WDS Role Services, select both the Deployment Server and Transport Server, and then press Next, and then Install. Once the installation has succeeded, you can just close the wizard and then go to Tools and then Windows Deployment Services. In the Windows Deployment Services uh, panel, you can expand servers and then for the local server that you're on, you can right click it and then press Configure Server and then you can just press Next on this first box. You've got a couple options, you can either integrate with uh, with Active Directory or you can have a standalone server. For this example, we are just going to integrate it with Active Directory. Now you can specify the folder path for where you want all of the files and settings to go. By default, it just puts it on the C remote install. But if you have a secondary, uh, for instance, a data drive, yeah, you can install it on that. Uh, I'm just going to do it as the default. This is just a warning to say that it's for best performance, have it on a separate drive than the OS, but it works perfectly fine having it on the C drive. For this uh, setting, I'm going to set it to respond to all clients. So basically, if uh, any client sends a network boot request to the server, it will accept it. Now that that's complete, I'm just going to untick the add images, because I'll show you how to do that manually, and then press finish. Now to actually add the install and boot images file, uh, the best thing to do is get the installation media ISO file that you want to deploy, uh, copy it to the server and then right click and mount. Then in the sources folder, you will have a boot.wim and an install.wim file. Uh, so what you'll want to do is go to the boot images, right click and press add boot image browse and then go to the mounted media and then go to sources and select the boot.wim and then press open and then next and then give it a name so this is going to be the windows um, 10 enterprise and then next and then next and this will add the image Once the image has been successfully added, you can just press finish. And then do the same again for the installed images, install images folder. And then do right click add install image. Create a group, we'll just call this Windows 10. And then do next, then select the install.wim file in the same directory. And then next. And then if you if there are multiple versions on the disk, it will you can tick them here. I'm just gonna untick the default name and then enter it manually. So I'm just gonna get rid of evaluation. And then next, next, and then wait for it to import. Now that that's finished, I can press finish. And you should have a Windows 10 folder and within it have a the Windows 10 installation media and then in the boot images have the Windows 10 boot image. That's all we need to do on the server side. So what I'll do is open up a client and then start. And then what you wanna do is boot from the network. So in Hyper-V I've set the network card to boot first and it's picked all the uh, server information and I can just press enter. 
for a PC or a laptop, you'll just have to press either F11 or F12 as soon as you turn it on and it should uh, start the network boot. Now that that's booted off the network, we can select the language settings and press next. And it's gonna ask us to authenticate. This basically, um, you just wanna use an account which has permission over that inst um, remote install folder that was created during the setup. And then here we can see the Windows 10 Enterprise image that we loaded in. If you load in other images, they will just appear in a alphabetically sorted list. So we can select Windows 10 Enterprise and press next. And what I'll do is just delete the partitions that were created earlier from the previous install. And then press next. And this will go through and automatically install Windows 10 like it would if you just put um, booted from a USB. Now that's gone through the installation process, we can continue as normal, like it would just done a standard install. So we can select the language, the keyboards, skip the additional keyboard layout. And then just go through the standard setup. Skip all this nonsense. And now that's finished, we are at the desktop. Uh, standard Windows 10 install. You can see that it's given us our name. It's automatically added it to the domain for us. Uh, Windows 10 21H2. Now we can see that because it's already added to the domain and it's give us, uh, it gives by default uh, the the username and then a number. So if we just go back to the deployment server, we can go to properties and then in uh, let's see. in clients, if you want, you can tick the joining a domain. So if you tick this, it will it won't add the device to the domain during the process as well as you can specify any unattended installation files for automation. You can also go to uh, the client naming policy under ADDS and then basically create whatever naming policy you want rather than giving it the username and then a number. And that's the basics for getting Windows deployment services set up and an image deployed.